James and today I'll be teaching myself how to build a hoover out of a hoover. I had an old hoover. It broke down so I smashed it apart and out of the bits I'm going to make a hoover. So we have a 450 watt uh, about that uh, engine which will suck all the dust in. So all we need theoretically is a chamber to collect the dust and a filter. So for a filter I have an old mesh sieve which I can glue on the rubber seal. Fits perfectly. On top of this I need a chamber. So what I come up with is a, dance, a dance's cone, a traffic cone. So on top of the traffic cone will sit the piping, thus enabling me to suck up anything I need to suck that's on the floor. So for the first step we need to get the sieve attached to the seal on the motor. So the easiest way is just to glue it on with a general purpose glue. To enhance the filter I have a pair of 12 denier tights that I happen to have lying around. You need 12 denier or uh, if you go any lower you'll get ladders in your tights. What you want to do is place the sieve within the tights. We shall tie this off and cut it off later and then we're going to glue it onto the seal. We've given 24 hours for that glue to dry. Now we want to glue the cone on top of the filter. Right, there's the cone taped to the motor. It doesn't look pretty, but if you were a vacuum cleaner, would you want to look pretty? Okay, for the next step, these wires coming out of the motor need to go through the housing for the motor. There's a hole at the bottom there, but they're not going to fit. So we're going to have to take these wires apart, put the wires through the hole, and then put them back together again. This is a relay here, um, a resistor, and unfortunately the switch is broken. I'm not worried about that, because it's going to plug directly to the mains. Uh, we've just taken the motor and cone off again to think about portability of this device. Now we have the old wheels from the old vacuum cleaner here, so why not use these? The casing fits directly into it because that's where it used to sit. It is, even has uh, screw holes at the back so I don't have to do any drilling at all. It'll just screw straight in. Right, on these wheels we have some sharp edges where I've smashed through the hoover with a hammer. So we're just going to take these out with a hacksaw. Right, it's 24 hours later, we're given time for the glue on the cone to dry. We've also uh, shortened the wires and taken the starter capacitor off uh, as it was in the way and mounted it directly onto the winding case for the plug wire. So now we're going to fit the motor into the casing. This rubber stop has to fit in the bottom here. So we're going to put these wires through that hole in that I smashed through with a hammer to make it fit in. So that's neat and snug in there. So let's get these darn tights off. Next we want to mount it into my wheel device here by screwing it into the original holders. There we go, it's starting to look like something. Now we're just going to widen this hole because although it will provide suction, the dust has got to come out when I empty it. Well, we have a nice hole there. Now we're going to test it. Safety is paramount importance, so we're going to make sure the wires go on the correct way round. Blue is neutral, so it goes there. Brown is live, fits on there. Now to plug it in.
Okay, the, the moat is excellently running, and we have a good suction there. We may as well test it out by cleaning up my mess. Okay, sucked up well, let's try uh, just emptying it. Simple as. I've noticed a problem, however, with the traffic cone. As it is so soft and malleable, it is shrinking with the power of the vacuum. I have no idea how long it's going to last. Right, as I've decided to keep the winding case, we have these exposed wires going into it. So we need some way of covering those for safety so that they don't cross. Uh, so we have a space here in the wheel casing. And this would fit ne neatly in there. So we can just uh, hacksaw this bit off here and uh, fit it in and put covering of some sort over these wires. Right, I found this bottle cap from an old squeezy bottle. I'm going to feed the wires through here and glue it on to the wire winder to act as a sheath for the electrical wiring that is exposed. Okay, we've had a complete change of plan with the motor vacuum chamber because the vacuum was so strong it was compressing the cone and moving it out of place. It's obviously going to fall off. We have come up with the following plan. We're going to put the seal on, carve out a couple of centimetres from it, then place in it this solid UPVC water pipe Cut it down a little, then place the cone on top. Thus we have the motor, chamber, another chamber, but with the ability to empty it here and attach the hose. So let's get on and glue that together. So in order for the chamber to fit in the seal, we need to carve it out to the, almost the very edge there. Now we want to saw down this water pipe somewhat. There's a large crack here, it's not straight. This looks like a good length. So we're just going to mark that down 12 centimetres all around. Right, the cone is a little large, so we're going to cut that down possibly to there. Right, I've made an extraordinary boo-boo. I've cut the cone too short. Now it won't fit over, it fits in. We'll just have to improvise and fit the bottom half there and get the top half over that bottom piece. Such is life. That's fucking hopeless. I would have to come up with another plan. Right, we could glue it from the inside. My concern was that the vacuum might uh, pull it apart. We've got no other choice at the moment. We have to deal with the fitter again as the other one was large enough to fit over the motor. This one has to fit into the pipe. So we're going to have to cut this around. It's going to cut around the edge with a knife carefully. Right, we have the seal glued onto the motor. We have the filter cut out. We have the vacuum casing cut and ready to go. We have the cone glued and taped and the 12 denier tights cut and ready to go. It's team vacuum assemble. We place the mesh into the mould, put the casing into the tights, the casing on top of the mesh, the tights through the cone, the cone on top of the casing, and the tights over the cone. So we have a black cone. We don't even have to paint it. It looks quite stylish. Okay, it's 24 hours later. We're giving everything a chance to dry. So we're going to put our tights on. 
and extend it as far as we can go over the motor. I think there's going to be a problem with this section of the tights going into the chamber. So we're going to just use a rubber band. So we're just going to attach the reel holder using a little screw on that edge where it touches the edge of the other bit. There we go, one simple screw solved the whole so solution to the solution of the problem. So there we have a perfectly acceptable cable winder. Now to reassemble the black hat and go for phase two testing. Okay, ready for test two. Suction excellent. Maneuverability. Excellent. Disassembly. Fine. Cone is intact. Cable away. Bit of a hassle, but you get that. Fast forward. Complete. A compact little hoover. It's very nice. I like it. I've saved myself fifty pounds and had the pleasure of being innovative and inspiring myself, if not other viewers. I should call it the Victor. The Vector Victor. The Victor Vacuum. The Victor Vacuum. I, I could even draw a little face if you want. It is not a witch's hat. I didn't plan it that way. It is not sorcery. It is Hoover magic. The Victor 5000. Not available in any shops. Don't buy it now. Costs nothing. Economic design. Sleekness. Ingenuity, cable retraction, capability, funny face. The Victor 5000. Don't buy it now.